Hello, everybody, and welcome to the beginning of chapter two. We are looking at page 37 in the workbook. And up to this point in the course, we've been talking about vector spaces, various definitions and properties. Um, the new topic in this chapter is to talk about functions between vector spaces. The most important type of a function is called a linear transformation. We're going to spend a lot of this chapter talking about that. All right, so let's start with the definition of what a linear transformation is. Okay, let's read through this together. So let v and w be vector spaces over a field f. Okay, we call a function t from v to w a linear transformation from v to w if for all x and y in our domain v and every scalar c, both of the following are true. Okay, let's read these conditions together. Okay, so A says that if we take t of x plus y, that's going to always give us the same result as t of x plus t of y. There's a name for this property. When a function satisfies that property, we say that it preserves addition. Okay, we can either do the addition of x and y in the domain or the addition of t of x and t of y in the codomain. Okay, and then B says that t of a scalar c times x equals c times t of x. When a function has this property, we say that it preserves scalar multiplication. OK, so what we could say then is that a linear transformation is just a function that goes between two vector spaces that preserves addition and scalar multiplication. OK, and it turns out Linear transformations have all kinds of nice properties, and we're going to get started by just starting to explore some of the properties um, that linear transformations have. All right, so let's look at example one here together. Okay, it asks us to find a linear transformation t from r2 to r2 such that t of 1, 0 equals 3, 4, and t of 0, 1 equals negative 1, 2. Okay, so basically, they're giving us two points. They're telling us, telling us that if we take 1, 0, and 0, 1, and substitute those in, we're going to get these two outputs. Okay, so let's get started by supposing that t is linear. They want us to find a linear transformation, okay, with the two points that they gave us, t of 1, 0 equals 3, 4, and t of 0, 1 equals negative 1, 2. Okay. Now, one observation that we might make is there's something kind of interesting about the two inputs that they gave us, these two vectors 1, 0, and 0, 1. You might recognize those as being the standard basis vectors for R2. We can build any vector in R2 using a linear combination of those two vectors. So here's what we can do then we can actually use this as a way to figure out what t of a, b is for any vector a, b, and r2 by making the observation that a, b can be written as a times 1, 0 plus b times 0, 1. Okay, and the reason that that is significant is that we made the assumption that t is linear, which means that we can go back up to our definition up here and use the two properties in the definition, starting with this one. Okay, it tells us that if we take t of x plus y, we can split that up into t of x plus t of y. So if you think of this first thing as being our x and the second thing as being our y, we can rewrite that as t of a times 1, 0 plus t of b times 0, 1. Okay, we just use the definition of linearity property A. Okay, I'm just going to write for short A, property A. Okay, but there's another property. If T is linear, we know that we can, we can factor scalars out according to property B. So that means that T of A times 1, 0 is the same as A times T of 1, 0 plus B times t of 0, 1. Okay, there we're just using property B in the definition of a linear transformation. Okay, so this is by linearity property B. Okay, but notice what we've done here. 
we've broken this down to a point where we've got t of 1, 0 and t of 0, 1, and we know what those values are. t of 1, 0, for example, is given to us up here as 3, 4. So this is now equal to a times 3, 4. Okay, and then similarly, t of 0, 1, that's negative 1, 2. Okay, so we'll go ahead and substitute that in. And the last step here would be just to do the algebra on the right-hand side. Okay, to multiply the a, a and the b through, let's do that. We'll get 3a, 4a, plus negative b, 2b. And one last step, we could go ahead and add those ordered pairs together. That's going to give us 3a minus b and 4a plus 2b. Okay, so... That's actually our answer here. Okay, we, we came up with a formula for um, t of a, b. Now, what's, what's interesting about this, I'm going to make one comment here at the bottom of this. What this argument shows is that there's actually only one linear transformation. Okay, I'm going to write that and then we'll talk about it a minute here. So this argument shows... There is at most one linear transformation with these properties. So in other words, what we've demonstrated is that if you're given just these two points here and here, that's enough information to figure out what the formula for this linear transformation has to be for any a b in our entire domain that's kind of that's kind of amazing if you think about it just being given two points is enough to determine an entire formula for this function it's one just kind of the one of the ways that linear transformations behave okay now we're done with this problem but there is one little detail that we glossed over here i don't know if you if you noticed it maybe um how do we know that this function is really linear that we came up with? Okay, we assumed that it was linear in our very first line up here. Okay, so technically, we should verify that this, this formula that we came up with is a linear transformation. I'm not going to do that in this video, but if you're interested, example two down below takes the same linear transformation that we came up with and actually steps you through a proof that it's linear. Okay, so feel free to take a look at that if you want to.